I'm Ralph. The nth degree is a film and theatre project conceived and led by Emmanuel Omborg, a collaboration between Midpowers Youth Theatre and Immediate Theatre in Hackney. Um, Emmanuel is a Swedish filmmaker and artist based in Hackney and he wanted to explore the question of riots and in particular the point at which peaceful protest turns violent. So we began by looking at two historical events, uh, one fairly recently, the 2011 riots in Hackney in London, and secondly the Rebecca riots in Mid and West Wales in the mid-19th century. Off we went to London, uh, six members of the youth theatre and myself to work with Emmanuel, some other theatre professionals and eight young adults from immediate theatre. Uh, we spent a week rehearsing, researching, devising. Uh, we had the opportunity to talk to various members of the local community, people who had either witnessed the uh, Hackney riots or reported on them for local media. Um, and we also had the chance to speak with uh, Rianne Jones, a South Wales academic who's written a very a recent and very brilliant book about the cultural influences on the Rebecca rioters. And then we brought the whole shebang over back to Paris. Yeah, we had the Londoners here for two weeks in the summer, which was fabulous. They lived and built and worked with us in Landod. We continued to devise and rehearse and finally produced the play Switch uh, for audiences uh, in Landod. Switch is a term that you'll, you'll hear described and explained in the film itself. And you'll also see some footage of the, the Londoners at large in our beautiful countryside. Uh, it was a fabulous project to be involved in. Um, the play itself was a kind of mashup of verbatim testimony from the Hackney riots and a uh, scripted uh, dialogue that we wrote during the process for the Rebecca sections. Um, the costume is a mashup of the two, a very deliberate nod to the Rebeccas who made that conscious decision to flip social and cultural norms as part of their protest. I hope you enjoy the film. Thank you. Goodbye. So, yeah, I must overcome fear, which would enable, which would means I have to be brave to be able to fight the um, oppressors which are the turnpike men, the gentry, the men at the toll gates, and the constables. Where are you right now? I'm on the streets. There's rioting going around. It's fairly late, it's dark. But I feel fairly calm. Who are you? Me, I'm a farmer. A farmer who keeps paying money, shillings, shillings, shillings and shillings for them to open the gate. And I'm paying, I'm paying, I'm paying and I'm not surviving. They're taking everything away from me. Everything. What do you want? I just want stuff to change. It's been the same forever and it just needs to change. I'm not a violent person yet. I don't like violence, but people listen to it. For those in power to, to feel like what I feel. Revenge. Empathy. But mostly revenge. Sometimes I read in Revelation because people say now is the last day and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth will pass away and there was no more sea. Why no more sea? Now I think this is why. The sea is water. And salt water. Not like a, 
a stream or a well. You can't drink it and you can't breathe it because it's water. But fish, fish can breathe it, but men can't live in it. So what it's saying seems to mean, fish can live in it, men can't. Now we can't live here either. How we live is like the sea. We can't breathe. Our squire, our squire, he's like a fish, looks like a fish too, feel so. And Vicar, Vicar can breathe, he swims about, woggles his tail, bitter water, and he lives in it. Bailiffs, justices, hangman, lawyer, mayor, all the gentry swimming about. We can't live in it. We drown. I'm gonna drown, man. It's like people get all wound up, and wound up like like a spring, kind of, with all the st with all this bad stuff that goes on. It's like a collective of people aiming like anger or frustration towards something. When th there's a build up of frustration, and they vent through writing. A writer is like a voice. Mass civil disobedience. People don't just wake up and say, okay, today I'm gonna riot. There's always gotta be a reason behind it. It often starts as a protest. Like being around here, don't really see much in the line of riots or even protests. Today is the beginning of the fight back against the cuts in happening. <laughs> The coalition is attacking the fabric of society. NHS jobs and services being cut. Wholesale privatisation planned. 3,500 young people will lose their EMA. <laughs> and student fees are tripling. I want to go to uni, but I can't afford to go to uni because I don't have £9,000. Where am I going to get that from? Yeah, you get student loans, but I still have to pay that money. I don't want to be in debt because I just don't know how my life is going to turn out. So it's just so many things that it, there hasn't been so much change. Council funding cut for four years. Some say we shouldn't protest and wait for the next election. No! no. We can't wait until the damage is done. No. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody else to privatise the NHS. We did. Yeah. Yeah. I live in a young people's home and before I got that home I had to go through a lot of struggles and that's because they've been cut. Social services are getting cut. There's just so many cuts that's just happening and it just comes to show that not a lot has really changed from 2011 and 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, to mobilise and defeat the coalition cuts. If we do not speak out, our silence will take it for an agreement. Yeah. They say cut back. We say fight back. They say cut back. We say. In the 2011 riots, there's a lot of talks about cuts to the public sector, and with the Rebecca riots, there's talks about how when they set up the toll gates that the farmers had to use to get to the market, the money wasn't going back to like the road, so it wasn't going back to the public. It's kind of like this link between, you know, trying to drain the, um, the poor of like basically what they have left and trying to get like squeeze as much as you can out of them to then bolster up like this rich part of society that you want to look after yeah. more. It's a shilling to raise the gate. Who asked for a new toll on the North Street? Come on, whose side are you on? I'm a working man, same as yourself. Working to make coin for them already I was broken into? It's the same rules for everybody. Let us get on through, man. It's a shilling to raise the gate. I'll give you a shilling over, don't wait yourself. What's the hold up? How many working men do you know sit on the turnpike trust them? Let the bloody sheep through. You all that this is nearly done. Yeah. yeah. Now look, we walk down the street, we get pulled over by the police. There's nothing here for us. The youth club had activities, 
stuff to do. Youth clubs has been Music closed in schools. London. It was a youth club that most of us, me and my friend, always had to go. But when we found out it was closed down, we wanted to do something about it. But we told ourselves, if we do something about it, we're just going to waste our time because no one's going to listen. You get me? Mm. Yeah. yeah, every day getting stopped and searched. I've even been arrested myself, sitting 12 hours in a cell for no reason. Just for them to tell me I got NFA, <laughs> not for their action. What compensation do I get out of that? Nada. You punish me for being on the streets, but if you take away where I am supposed to go, where am I supposed to go? Yeah. 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 And it's not just one youth club, it's massive of them all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The police said they want to have a dialogue, but if they can't have that simple respect for us, how are we ever going to speak? I know yeah. how it is when police officers comes around, they see you, like a black boy with a hoodie on or a white boy with a hoodie on and you're just there in a group of people and then after that they will stop in front of you stop and search you stop and search you it is a shilling to raise this gate and unless young price takes his sheep off out the road or pays the toll I can't raise this gate and answer fair to those who pay my wage. Well, with that said, play as it needs to be said, is it not? Play in English too. Yeah. Yeah. Open the gate. bloody gate. Oh. It's a bloody gate, Pike Man. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you threaten me. Oh, I did no such thing. You're all the same, are we not? Open the gate, man. Yeah. How many times do we need to pay to enter a village? How did they expect us to pay 9,000 for uni? And they scrap EMA that's keeping us in college. Yeah. What's stopping us from doing drug days on the street? No. You know what that bit where Dory then goes, what's stopping us from um, doing drug deals on the streets? Because, yeah, I think that bit I can really relate to, especially from the people all around me. Feeling that like poverty is driving you to commit crimes. Just want something to do. Especially now in summer when school's out. Yeah, yeah. we'll just be jamming, like, by the train tracks. We'll just be jamming and then another group will come. They'll, they'll spot you and they'll start screwing you. Like, giving you those looks. Next thing you know, fight with oh, the oh, Everyone knows what's happening in the streets. People get stabbed all over posters that read on their side. Yeah. We spoke about like postcodes in Hackney and like people being beaten up for postcodes, stuff like that. And where I grew up, it was like, um, there was a, tra a set of train tracks and if you crossed over, you'd get beaten up. Like, it's slightly different, obviously, because you, um, it's two separate sides, but you couldn't go to somebody else's area without the, like, fear of something might happen to you. Yeah. As a councillor, I want to help build a protest. We are not going to step aside to that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, listen. Some young man has just been shot dead in Tottenham by the police. There's a protest outside the police station. We don't know what's happened, but the police aren't talking. What? what? This young man had three children. So, um, I'm just getting here. I'm going to take down. Okay, so it says to confront or attack. Okay, in order to have or to be. Okay. okay. I think um, the week that we spent in London really helped me sort of empathise with the Hackney rioters because, uh, and reading reading all the um, all the articles about it really sort of helped me um, understand what was going through their brains because um, when I first got there, I didn't I didn't know anything about Hackney riots when I first got to London. I just knew it had we we were doing Rebecca and we were also looking at another riot. <laughs> Stop and search is something they brought in post the sus laws. Sus laws is the Suspicious Persons Act. It's common law, and whenever you hear the police using common law on the black community, it means that they're doing something that is dubious and should be kept an eye on. The sus laws meant 
the police officers could arrest us for looking suspicious. Nowadays they stop and search you because they say you look suspicious. In those days they could arrest us and charge us as suspicious looking people. Can you imagine what they did to us then? The first time I was ever arrested in my life was the first time I'd gone to West End and I was arrested for being a suspicious person. I saw my brother sent to prison. It made me so angry that within one year I was doing three years in prison. I was being criminalised and it messed up my life. And most of the kids who lived on this estate, two thirds of the kids I know had been through that. If you get done for sus twice, and Sos ultimately is breathing whilst black and letting a copper see you. If you get done for it twice, you go to prison. If you get done for it once and you've got a criminal record, you go to prison. If you get done for it once and you haven't got a criminal record, you do get a criminal record. When officers arrest you for Sos, you cannot beat the charge because it's the officer's word against yours. They said in our case that they saw us trying to pickpocket foreign looking women and they didn't bring any foreign looking woman to court who said she was being pickpocketed. So we were angry at this racism that we was facing. Excuse me, please. As your member of parliament, I would be grateful for your attention. You can help us pull down the toll gates. Oh, yeah. yeah. In some ways, yes, but not with violence. No. Yeah. The toll gate system is failing us all. It's failing us, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. No. Not sure the gentry are too bothered though. Oh, no. no. It is exploitative, and that is why I'm here. Mm. Let's tear them down. Yeah. 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 Tear them down, and they will simply put them back. So well, yes. Yes. What I'm trying to say is. No. no I'm just just saying. Saying. Listen. The people that are kept, uh, kept on paying the toll gates. I think they were running out of poverty. So poverty caused them to, to, to riot. And I think poverty also caused the 2011 riot as well. People being mistreated, unfairness, and all the people in power are not listening to them and not representing them, for example, MPs and things like that. And I think that's exactly what, what happened in the 2011 riots. It wasn't just the toll gates. It was a lot of, it was a lot of other things. Um, and the same with the, same with the hack, hackney riots. It wasn't just police brutality. The poor law reforms have changed the way a community looks after its poor. It's old, it's sick, and it's unemployed. They want us all in the new workhouse! Yeah. We don't work for nothing or die! Yeah. Yeah. You can do much if you are determined. That's my aim, I give you my word. It's good enough for me! It's it's good enough for me. We must respect the law or I cannot help you. Oh we pay the toll at these gates going about our lawful, our lawful business. Mm -hmm. And where does the money go? Where does it go? I'll tell you where it goes. To the manor house or to England. Yeah. Yeah. In the same place that you live. Yeah. Yeah. In the Rebecca riots, their living was practically being taken away. They couldn't fish in certain rivers. They had to pay to enter a village. It was stopping people from earning a living in the London riots is stopping people from getting a further education so they can go on to make a living. You all call for violence, I call for mediation. Oh, listen, listen to the man. Listen, 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 the government fears rebellion and you will only fan the flames if you turn to violent action. No good will come of it. No good will come of it. Let me see something I can do. All our lives we pay, we pay rent and rates. Yet you allow us to live in hovels. Like yes. this? Yeah! yeah. 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 We pay and live, and are always poor. Mm. We live and pay to keep others rich, mm. but our work. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Poor gates, you must pay just work! Yeah! Yeah. 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 You raise gates. Yeah! Yeah. 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 Now you raise toll. Yeah. Yeah. gates run by different rich man's trust on the same strength of a poor man's road. Yeah! yeah. The rural Welsh were quite poor. They had to pay to like work, so it was like a money issue there. And then in the 2011 riots, they were like scrapping a lot of money things like EMA and uni fees, so they felt like they couldn't afford to live anymore. Um, the enclosure of land and rivers meant that a lot of people ended up being like recategorised as poachers. 
uh, because one week you could go and take some apples or take some fish and it would be okay uh, but the next week you'd end up trespassing on private property. Mostly the Rebecca riots were men cross-dressing as women to give the idea symbolically of the world turned upside down um, and of things being completely the opposite of what they should be. And if you look at some of the things that these people were experiencing, suddenly they were being charged to travel on roads that had previously been free, uh, not being allowed to fish in rivers or take fruit and fill from lands that they previously had been able to use. Um, to them, that must have seemed like the world turned upside down as well. Carnival in that part of the country at that time was a time when normal rules of behaviour were suspended and you could do things that were a bit crazy and a bit disrespectful. That helped to open up a space where people could do extraordinary things that might involve breaking the law, might involve destruction of property or violence, because they would be outside their everyday selves. Have you heard that term? Don't let me switch. You know that term? You all know that term, yeah? yeah. Oh, good. We made that term famous, man. Back in those days, because we used to say to them, don't make us switch from them. And what made us switch was racism. When we face racism, because our parents didn't offer us any, they couldn't offer us any leadership because they came from abroad. They didn't understand it. They thought education would be the equalizer and we wouldn't face it, but we did. And we were young, dumb, living with mum. And we only had one piece of power, and that was our physical attributes and what we could do to people. We had to fight. See those streets that these youths talk about nowadays, like it's theirs. We fought. And I mean, we had to fight. Racist, teddy boys, National Front, and the police to get those streets. So we learned as we were growing up that when put under pressure, we had to flip that switch. And flipping that switch just meant that we would go to the nth degree to make sure that the oppressor, the racist, didn't win. So in 85, when we kicked off, they say that there was hundreds of us on that estate and that it was orchestrated. But we had a public inquiry that showed maybe there was a hundred of us and there was no orchestration whatsoever. It was just hardcore anger at the arm of the state that had been used to oppress us the most. And it was based on the death of black women, the shooting of a black woman the week before, but the denial of the right to protest. And that's what reared its head again in 2011. Have you heard of, this, have you heard of the term Dolly Swishin? Yeah, we made that term famous. Dolly Swishin. And what made us switch? Oppression, racism. We were young, dumb, and living with mum. We had to fight. See those streets that these youth talk about in our day like it's theirs, we fought for those. See those streets that the youth talk about nowadays like it's theirs, we fought for those. See those streets that the youth talk about nowadays like it's theirs, we fought for those. And I mean, we had to fight racists, teddy boys, National Front, the police, to get those streets. So, when growing up, put under pressure, we learned to flip that switch. And flipping that switch meant that we would go to the nth degree to make sure that the oppressor didn't win. When we kicked off in 1985, they said that there was hundreds of us and that it was orchestrated. But it was not orchestration. It was just pure, hardcore anger at the arm of the state that had been used to oppress us the most. Sparked by the police chiefs and the member of our community. And that is what happened again in 2011.
not even real what we're doing. Even being in the scene is quite scary because even sometimes your people, you're trying to attack the oppressors. You could also, you as a person, you could also get attacked because you're also putting yourself, because it must take so much for you to say, do you know what, I don't care whatever happens to me, I'm gonna put, because you're also putting yourself in the front as well. You could also be attacked, someone, could attack you just don't know what could happen so for someone to say do you know what i actually want to go as far as that then clearly things must be really really bad so yeah i must overcome fear which would enable which would means i have to be brave to be able to fight the um oppressors which are the turnpike men the gentry the men at the toll gates and the constables the peasant who forgot his place in the order of things, ran roughshod over rule of law, who bore pick shafts, heat cutters and sides. Was it you? Was it him? Can you point to him now? Who whispered foul threats into the ears of a trembling pikeman or discharged arms into the night air? broke the peace with a sledgehammer, an axe, brute muscle and sweat. really get a sense of of the riots and what happened it's really good to put it into a concept of linking it to what have, other things taking place elsewhere it was the beginning of the occupy movement which took place uh, started in new york which they kind of keep back against the one percent inequality you had kind of what they called the arab spring which was the uprising so 2011 was a really kind of explosive year and i don't think that you can think much about the Tottenham riots without putting it into that kind of context of the kind of shift in power and thinking about why people participated but not just in a kind of conscious level but in a kind of unconscious level too but in 2011 let's find myself in that year let's see where i am what am i doing what do i look like so this is me i'm glad that you conceded that it did start off as a peaceful protest and it has been a part of a wider movement of peaceful protest calling for democratic accountability and transparency by the police. Now, last night, according to reports that I've heard, this started when a young woman was battened by the police for no reason. Now, I cannot verify that, but that seems to be the trigger certainly on the street. I try and tell people what it was like to actually be a part or to witness the riots. And it was like, it actually felt like peace because there was so much unity against the police that at that particular moment it was like you were i was seeing people i hadn't seen for like years just like standing around some of rubbing bottles of the police but it was almost a sense of kind of safety at that particular moment it actually felt like peace because there was so much unity against the police. 
at that moment, there was almost a sense of safety. The family I come from, um, we've had to rely on the public sector quite a lot. So like the NHS and things like that. Um, because when I was growing up, my mum was single as well. So I grew up with single parent family um, and that was very difficult. And basically I was there during like before the cuts and after the cuts. And I'm not saying like growing up with just a single parent is easy, but it was <laughs> easier before those cuts. Now it kind of seems somewhat impossible. A lot of young people feel let down, and their parents too, they feel let down by the political system. Just the divide. On the social ladder, they're a different, what can I call it? Social communities locked in different positions on the ladder. I heard what he said. But I think, personally, the youth that did this only let themselves down. They had themselves to blame. And why would you say that? <laughs> Look at me. I grew up poor with a single mother. This right here is my store, which I worked hard to be a manager of. And these youths had the same opportunity as me. Just because you came from a hard situation and made yourself a manager doesn't mean everyone else can do the same thing. I was here yesterday, right? And despite everything that was going on, the fires, the looting, they still had time to come over and say hello to my dog, yeah? So? They are not bad people. Yeah, exactly. They are the powder keg of what the government has done. Building the situation up as they have done, yeah? Yeah. And now they got themselves a grenade that are blown up in their faces. <laughs> My problem with them is... Excuse me, but who is them? Yeah, who is them? The people that robbed my shop. No, this is the United Kingdom riot. That's what we're talking about. No, we're talking about... I'm just saying, it's not just about racism. It's poverty, you know? Feeling like you're in poverty in one of the richest places in the world. Having everything here, but you can't access it. This is children across the whole of the country. This is not only young black youth, you know? This is children across Birmingham, Manchester. It's spreading, it's going far out because all children have something to say. I understand the problems and there are deeper issues, complex issues. I understand that people are angry and it might be a way of forcing things out, but it doesn't work. Nothing works. But you have to find another way. You don't think we've been trying? We all want out, everybody wants out, but as soon as you get out of these estates, you get punished. My mum moved me to the country for four years, and because of my voice, you see I got raised up, I got shit from everyone around me. We weren't embraced. They didn't know how to embrace somebody who'd grown up with a hard life. I had five fights the first week of school. I never had one fight at school in London, and I had five fights the first week in Essex because I was from the estate. We didn't know no one, we weren't accepted, pushed aside, told you to sit in the corner. What happens when you put a dog in the corner? It lashes out. We're like pack animals, we don't like it, but we've learned to do it, adjusted, evolved to it. I was raised on a council estate. My mum did move me away from said council estate. Um, I did get made fun of. I did move back. And when I was in primary school, my older sister, when she was in primary school, um, we used to live in a lorry, like a old like circus equipment lorry, and um, we were parked up in this like car park just on the edge of town. My sister used to get so much shit for it, like a lot, like bruises, cuts, like kicking shit for it. And that was when she was like eight years old. And it's like eight year olds have it ingrained in their head that they can do that to somebody because of where they live or where they've grown up. But is it the right way of expressing yourself? Violence and looting. There is no right way to express it. There isn't, when you don't know how to make your voice heard. Scream as loud as you want, but if no one's listening, people have been screaming. And people are saying, look what they've done to my Debenhams, look what they've done to my JD. People don't even shop in JD, but it's all got something to say about yeah. it. It's not about that. It's about finding out what the children are upset about and learning from them. Yes. 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 So, what are they upset about? Oh, oh, racism, oh. the police! Poverty, inequality! Yes. This yes. country is actually very rich. And where did that wealth come from? Imperialism, looting yes. and stealing all around the world. Yes. Oh. Right, guys. Oh. It's a capitalist society. Get your fuck 
you. That's the kind of world we live in. And when we young people throw it in your faces, you get angry. All right, guys. Oh. Time to leave. Don't tell me to leave. It's a free country. Calm so. down. Don't touch me. I don't touch you. Don't shout. Break it up. I'm not shouting. I'm not shouting. All of you, move away. Move away. people for every job, you know? Yeah. That's why there's more crime, yeah? The government doesn't realise what they're doing to us. Don't care. There'll be riots. What's the point of yeah. all the youth clues? Why do that? Why? Yeah, there'll be riots. Yeah. What do you think the government should do? The government? Fuck the government! Yeah! yeah. The government. The voters are riding rampant over us. And Brandon, what's your line? It actually felt like peace because there was so much unity against the police. At that moment, there was almost a sense of safety. Can you say again, please, guys? No, please. Please, please. Please, please. Please, please. Please. Excuse me. Please. As your member of parliament, I will be grateful for your attention. You come to help us pull down the toll gate? Yeah. We raised new gates when there was none. Yeah, tear yeah. down the gates! Tear down the gates before you raise tolls. Tear down the gates! Tear down the gates! Tear down the gates! Run by different rich men, trucks by the same, stretched over poor man's walls. Break out the toll gates! Break this is a peaceable meeting. Roads on which even good beasts might break the leg. So something might happen, something might, might happen when you leave that house. 
there's this buzzing energy and something might happen. And you're getting ready, you're getting ready to go out. They don't know what it's like. Every day working your ass off. They don't know what it's like. They have everything. We have to work for it. Day in and day out. Every day. For the rest of your lives. And then your children have to do the same thing. And then you can't get out of poverty because, because it's just a cycle. And then your kids just follow it. And their kids just follow it. And their kids become rich. And your kids become poor. And, and it just goes on and goes on and goes on. And you can't get out of it. We tried protesting. And that did very little. Unless we had planned some sort of full-scale revolution, which I would be up for. But those things are, are pretty tricky to organize the government to treat us fairly, to stop putting toll gates on every road that we come across. It, and they raise the tolls and we just, we keep losing. They don't listen to us, they cut tuition fees, we can't do anything, we can't go to uni, and then they shut our youth clubs and arrest us for being on the streets. It's not a little thing, like we're not just jumping to that because we think it's the easiest thing to do, we're not doing it because we want to go and smash in a shop window, we're not doing it because we think that it's some solvable answer, you know, it's been leading up to it and I think people are starting to realise and it's starting to become like the last ditch answer for us. Who are you? I am Matt Price. I am a farmer. I'm Constable Bridges. Where are you? Right now, I mean, uh, I'm in a field. I'm in a youth centre that's being shut down. I'm in a riot. Quite muddy. Um, there's a fire pit outside. Um, what do you want? I want everybody to be safe. I want something... I, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Why will they ask us? What questions will they ask us? Yeah. What will they ask us? What will they do to us? What can they do? Anything they want. Australia? Anything they want. What questions will they ask us? Who was there? Who organised? Who passed the notes? Who marched at the head of the mob? Who was there? Was it you? Who were you with? That's what questions they will ask us. The regiment is here. My God, what are we going to do? God, why did you have to break up the village? That's what I told him. It was wild. Not what was thought of. None of us will speak. Yeah, no, it wasn't none of us. Yeah. Wait. I must say something. It's my job. I'm the constable. Constable! Fuck. What must you overcome to get what you want? I have to overcome the guilt of betraying my neighbours. I'm going to have to continue working with the with the English. I don't like it a lot, but I just kind of have to follow their lead. These English soldiers do rank higher than me, after all. The fear of what the police will do, of how the government will respond. Oh, doesn't feel right, but it doesn't feel like there's a right answer either. I want to be able to stay in my home with my children and that means fighting, and fighting means consequences. And consequences meaning my husband could get sent away, or my children could get taken away, or possibly I could go to the workhouse. Just get focused on the second. Okay. You've got to 
was all ready to go. Yeah. yeah. So why did you take part in the looting? I saw an opportunity and I went to it, innit? And what did you get then? Tracksuit, electronic stuff. I got some stuff for my son. And I got some stuff for me. Some clothes, trainers. How, How old are you? 16. You're 16 years old and you're out here getting stuff for your son? Yeah, I had to. Well, what did you get? I got some clothes, nappies, the entire Johnson set. Do any of you have any bad feelings or remorse for what you've done? The looting? No, no I'm alright. It feels like a normal day to me. Yeah. And what about you, when you're sleeping in your bed at night? Nah. Feels like Christmas came early. <laughs> It's Constable Bridges! I will not! I know why you're here! Life God, alright, please! Don't! You scare them! I won't go to the workhouse! They'll take my children! Sweet brave bastard! My gun! Not down flat! I hear your garments are hot here in Australia! If I had a pistol, I'd shoot you dead! Where are the children? They're not here! I sent them off! They ran when we saw you coming! I mean, there is a lot of wealth in this city. <laughs> You just have to look over there, Canary Wharf, just behind us. And that's what this government is looking out for. Them people there, yeah? They're not thinking about us. They're thinking about that one pocket up there, that one pocket. So what should the government do to stop you from rioting and looting? Put us back on EMA, uni fees, cuts. Help all the single mothers that are struggling right now. Like, come on, money, innit? Basically, this is not like we're doing it for the fun of it. We're doing this for money to survive in this world. Well, at least that's how I think. Agreed. Thank you. Well, <laughs> Aren't they lovely? Okay. Poverty and feeling isolated isn't an excuse, but it is part of the context in explaining their actions. These kids have made it much more likely that they'll be caught by the police, but they wanted what they haven't got, a voice. There have been over a thousand arrests since last week, and courts have been open 24 hours. But some are saying sentencing's too harsh. One man given 16 months in prison for stealing an ice cream. Two others given four years for inciting a riot on Facebook that never happened. Some councils are moving towards evicting riotous families from their homes. I'm Clayton Maxwell, and this has been Channel 4 News. Mary, just tell us where they are, and we'll keep you together. I think work out, so I I've heard you complain about the county rates. Garrett wouldn't betray his own kind. Not like Constable Bridges here. Who makes himself a new man with dirty clothes from his gentry friends? Enough! Take her away. Ma? No! I think the difference is that with the 1840, things have obviously, as time progressed, things have changed for them. But whereas in London, 2011, this was only seven years ago, Things hasn't changed that much. People are still angry about the things that they were angry about in 2011, just that um, there hasn't been a riot yet. That's just it. I think like one of the one of the key differences between it is how thought out the Rebecca riots was, and how the London riots was just kind of a literal spark, and then it just exploded and and grew out across the country. But I think that they happened for more or less the same reasons, which was the state pushing too hard on the working class. The things that were affecting the Welsh people affected them in the same way that a lot of the things that were affecting... So, like, even though in Hackney it was, like, EMA and, like, fees and, like, the youth clubs and stuff being cut and just, like, cuts to everything, um, which meant that they had nowhere to go. The places that they'd been before, they weren't allowed. Um, they were told they are being wrong somewhere where they'd been completely welcome for so much longer, like the enclosures of land in Rebecca Riot times. I never knew about the riots in 1840. To be honest, I never knew there were riots at that time. I thought riots were something new. <laughs> two men and two women from London and Wales came together to build a house overnight on the upper reaches of the River Wye. They sowed the ground with parsnips, carrots and beans and by Friday last they'd increased in number to 20 or 30. They invite all to come in and join them. Paupers, peasants, workers from around the country and beyond and they promised them food, drink and clothes. 
A declaration to the powers of England and to the powers of the world. Showing the cause why the people have begun to build dwellings, so corn and fish by the river Y. In Wales, we have the law of Tienos. Anyone that has built a house by night on common land and has a fire burning by morning may keep it. Take notice that we are not free people to the poor people that have no land or home have free allowance to labour or the use of the commons. It is the sword that brought in property in closed rivers and the commons. But the economic war is not enough for them. Recently, the criminalisation of the poor, the imprisonment of those that don't fit into the mould and the enclosure of borders all testify to the repression of the state. With each week, month and year that passes, we see the enclosure and exploitation of the last areas that escape privatisation. The world is exhausted and so are its people and all other living beings. For those whose profits will never be enough, our lives our homes and our imaginations are only markets to conquer. True freedom lies where a man receives his nourishment, and that is in the use of the earth. A man had better have no body than have no food for it. True freedom lies in the true enjoyment of the earth. True religion and undefined is to let everyone quietly have earth to manure and rivers to fish. There can be no universal liberty till this universal community is established. We find ourselves amongst so many diverse people because we feel that all struggles are linked together. We want to make this place a crossroad for struggles so that we can support each other. We count on the fact that what we build here and what strengthens and unites us will continue to put a spanner in the wheels of power. We are prepared to fight for the collective management and the liberation of land and we are ready ready to defend what has been built here together. We will tolerate neither eviction nor intimidation. Together, we fight against a world that exploits, oppresses, imprisons and kills.
Be still a while. Use your breath as an anchor. And in awe, experience steel grey crashing, rock thrashing spray, tongue biting salt air. Observe our softly lit orb, her tides and her reason. With each watery breath, notice icy blues, softer hues, gently lapping a shell pink shore. And with each breaking wave, listen, rest, rise and fall marking the rhythm of a sea lover's call. Be curious, use your breath as an anchor and be still a while more.